Picture this. An enemy fighter has slipped behind you, radar screaming that a missile is already in the air. Your pulse is hammering, the canopies rattling, and every instinct screams, just shoot backwards. Yet no jet in history has ever pressed a red button labeled rear fire. Why not, you ask? Because the moment you tried, physics would hand you the most expensive self-kill in aviation history. Declassified test reports, buried for decades, mind you, show the same brutal outcome every single time. Missile leaves, jet explodes, pilot never knew what hit him. Today, we're cracking those dusty files open and following the brutal chain reaction that makes backward launches a one-way ticket to oblivion. The idea sounds perfectly sane at first, doesn't it? Slap a rail on the tail, pop a missile backwards, and turn a terrifying tail chase into tail chase revenge. Engineers sketched it on bar napkins in the 50s, bomber crews practically begged for it in Vietnam, and video game designers still absolutely love the visual. It's a classic trope. The math, however, well, the math just laughs in your face. A fighter jet screaming through the sky at 600 knots has every molecule of air around it choreographed like a Swiss watch. Introduce a 5-meter rocket plume traveling the exact opposite direction, and that beautiful choreography instantly becomes a bar fight. Before the missile motor even reaches full thrust, the jet's own slipstream turns into a hammer aimed directly at its tail. It's a violent, self-destructive interaction, a battle against the very air keeping you aloft. Airflow over a supersonic jet is already a miracle of controlled violence. Think about it. The boundary layer hugging the fuselage is paper thin and traveling at 90% of the aircraft's speed. Fire a missile backwards, and you're suddenly asking that sheet of air to violently reverse direction. The result? A pressure spike the size of a freight train. Wind tunnel footage from the old Armstrong lab shows the shockwave curling back toward the stabilizers slamming them with instantaneous loads above 18 Gs. No aluminum tailplane built could survive that without bending far enough to smack the next thing in line, usually the pilot's own horizontal stabilizer. In one particularly dramatic 1973 test, the model aircraft quite literally snapped at the rear fuselage, sent the entire tail assembly into the roof tiles, and convinced even the most stubborn engineers to shelve the idea for good. It was a stark, undeniable demonstration of physics in action. But let's assume, just for a second, that the jet is tough enough to withstand that initial shock. The missile still has to actually clear the aircraft. At launch, it's traveling forward at the same 600 knots as the plane, yet its motor points aft. For the first critical half-second, the booster has to shove the weapon backwards until its relative speed drops below zero and then accelerates in the opposite direction. Translation? The missile has to fly through the jet's turbulent wake while slowing to a standstill relative to the ground. During that crucial window, the jet has moved forward roughly 150 meters. If the launch rail sits even slightly above the centerline, the jet's own tail fin passes through that space like a guillotine. Declassified footage from a chilling 1981 Navy experiment shows the exact moment a scaled rocket shears its own elevator. The test pilot, flying remotely, thankfully, watched his model auger into the ground and quietly wrote, suicide rail across the datasheet. It's a testament to how utterly impractical the concept is. Let's say you somehow solve the trajectory problem with some fancy vectoring. You still have a white-hot plume of aluminum-ammonium perchlorate churning out 1,800 degrees Celsius gas directly toward your engines. Modern fighters breathe enormous amounts of air, upwards of 150 kilograms every second. Suck in even a fraction of that scorching exhaust, and compressor blades start shedding like sparks off a grinder. The engine surges, the turbine overheats, and within two seconds, you've got a flame out on at least one side. At combat weights, that instantly turns your sleek fighter into an asymmetric glider with the glide ratio of a toolbox. One retired F-4 pilot who reviewed those dusty reports put it bluntly, you'd achieve the enemy's job for him, and do it with factory precision. Why give your adversary a helping hand when you can do the damage yourself, right? Missiles aren't dumb fireworks, you know, they're sophisticated flight computers with wings. 
Every current seeker, whether radar, infrared, or optical, assumes the launching platform is moving forward. Algorithms tirelessly correct for the shooter's speed, altitude, even the Earth's rotation beneath. Spin that fundamental assumption 180 degrees, and the entire guidance loop simply collapses. The weapon would need to reacquire a target it's already flying away from, all while its own velocity is negative relative to the jet. Early experiments tried bolting television cameras to the tail of a bomber and attempting to steer the missile remotely. The test round spent nine agonizing seconds hunting, ran out of kinetic energy, and finally arced into the Pacific 800 meters behind the bomber. The program summary reads, in all caps, mind you, unacceptable missed distance, concept terminated. It was a clear, definitive failure. Engineers sometimes mutter, we can armor the tail, we can reprogram the seeker, just give us the payload. But here's a reality check. A rear firing rail plus protective ducts adds roughly 180 kilograms aft of the pressure bulkhead. On a 9G fighter, that translates into a 1,600 kilogram meter pitching moment the flight control laws never accounted for. The center of gravity shifts dangerously aft, longitudinal stability shrinks to almost nothing, and the jet can no longer recover from a high angle stall without a drag chute it simply doesn't have. In plain words, the aircraft becomes eager to swap ends in midair, a trick you only ever want to see at an airshow, never, ever in combat. It's a recipe for disaster, fundamentally altering the aircraft's carefully calibrated flight characteristics. Fighter designers long ago accepted this physics brick wall and moved sideways. Smartly, I might add, all aspect seekers on today's AIM-9X or Python 5 let you fire forward and still kill the bandit behind you. The missile simply pulls a 180 after launch, bleeding speed but gaining angle for the kill. Helmet-mounted cues let you look back, shoot forward, and still score. If that fails, expendables, chaff, flares, towed decoys, by precious seconds, while wingmen practice loose-deuce tactics to clear each other's six. The rear-firing missile survives only as a thought experiment, and occasionally as a plastic model on a hobby shelf painted in what-if camouflage. It's a testament to human ingenuity finding elegant solutions around impossible problems. If these Cold War rabbit holes make your pulse jump, then park yourself in the cockpit with us, hit subscribe and YouTube will let you know the next time we pry open another locked filing cabinet. Don't miss it. Almost. In 1958, the Navy floated a tail defense concept for the massive P-6M Seamaster bomber. A slim rail popped out the very tip of the tail, launched a small heat seeker called Bushfire, and theoretically discouraged pursuit. The one live test caught the rocket motor trying to outrun the bomber at 400 knots. The missile wobbled, skimmed past the vertical stabilizer close enough to scorch paint, and self-destructed 1.2 kilometers back. The pilot later joked that the only thing it endangered was the cameraman on the chase plane. The Navy scrapped the Seamaster fleet soon after, and the blueprint quietly moldered in a Maryland archive stamped, no further action. It was a noble, if flawed, attempt that ultimately proved the concept's limitations. Bombers cruise straight and level, give plenty of warning, and can afford the considerable weight of a tail system. Even then, the engagement arc is typically limited to roughly 60 degrees aft, anywhere outside that cone, and the missile can't tell friend from foe. Fighters, by contrast, live in a three-dimensional knife fight where every kilogram matters and where today's threat could arrive from above, below, or sideways. Hanging a rear-only weapon on an airframe that already trades fuel for weapons is a bargain no pilot wants to sign. A fighter jet's very essence is agility and minimal weight, a backward missile system flies directly in the face of that design philosophy. Hypersonics, directed energy pods, and AI-guided projectiles all push the fight beyond visual range. In that world, if an enemy is consistently behind you, the failure happened 10 miles earlier on the tactical network, not in the cockpit. Engineers are busy teaching loyal wingman drones to be the rear guard instead, letting the manned jet stay nose first and energy rich. Bottom line. Until Newton retires, backward-firing missiles remain a cinematic fantasy, and the classified files are perfectly happy staying dusty. The laws of physics, after all, are non-negotiable. So, 
The next time you strap into DCS or binge Top Gun reruns and wonder why that button doesn't exist, remember the brutal chain. Airflow turns to sledgehammer, tail becomes bullet, exhaust eats engines, guidance gives up, and weight tips the jet into an unrecoverable tumble. Fighter pilots already trust the laws of physics with their lives every time they cross the fence, no need to pick a fight they're guaranteed to lose. If you dug this deep with us, drop a comment with the myth you want nuke next, and we'll keep unlocking the cabinets. Until then, throttle up, keep your nose ahead, and let the missile, not the jet, do the twisting.